Title, Reflections of Regret Chapter 1 The cruelty of Adam Adam Caldwell was known throughout his town as a boy who reveled in causing pain to others. From a young age, he bullied his classmates, taunted the elderly, and found joy in the misfortunes of those around him. His laughter echoed through the hallways of his school, a sound that sent chills down the spines of his peers. With every cruel act, he built a wall of isolation around himself, alienating his friends and family. As he grew older, the repercussions of his actions began to surface. He faced retribution from those he had wronged, but it never stopped him. Instead, Adam doubled down, convinced he was invincible. Chapter 2 the inevitable downfall as Adam transitioned into adulthood, his reputation as a heartless individual only solidified. He landed a job at a local company, where he continued his reign of terror. He belittled his co-workers, sabotaged their projects, and thrived on the chaos he created. However, one fateful evening, Adam pushed his cruelty too far. During an office party, he played a cruel prank on a colleague, Emily who had been struggling with personal issues. The prank backfired spectacularly, causing Emily to leave in tears. That night, she took her own life, a tragedy that sent shockwaves through the community. Adam felt the repercussions as the weight of his actions began to settle heavily on his conscience, but he brushed it off, claiming that people were too sensitive. Chapter 3 the reflection chamber it wasn't long after Emily's death that Adam found himself summoned to the reflection chamber, a facility known for reforming those whose cruelty had spiraled out of control. The authorities deemed him a danger to society, and the chamber was his final chance to confront his darkness. Upon entering, he was met with the ominous sight of the circular room filled with mirrors and holographic screens. The door shut behind him with a resounding thud, sealing his fate. Strapped to the central platform, Adam felt the surge of defiance. I'm not afraid of this, he scoffed. Chapter 4 Confronting the past as the chamber activated, the walls came alive with holographic images of Adam's past. At first, he watched in amusement as scenes from his childhood replayed. He saw himself laughing at a classmate's expense relishing the power he held over others. But the laughter faded quickly as the projections grew darker. Adam watched his cruelest moments unfold. Emily's face, twisted in agony, her eyes filled with despair as he laughed with his friends at her expense. He tried to look away, but the chamber forced him to confront the truth. Each image came with a powerful emotional wave, enveloping him in guilt and remorse. Chapter 5 The Weight of Guilt As The Projections Intensified the chamber echoed with the cries and pleas of his victims, overwhelming Adam. He felt the weight of their pain pressing down on him, a crushing burden that he could no longer escape. Tears streamed down his face as he relived the moments of cruelty, feeling their sorrow resonate within him. He was trapped in a loop of regret, unable to escape the torment he had inflicted on others. I didn't mean it. I was just trying to be funny. He shouted, but the chamber ignored his pleas. Chapter 6 the final decision as the experience reached its climax. The holograms converged to form a single image. Emily, standing before him, tears streaming down her face. Why didn't you stop? Why didn't you care? She asked, her voice echoing in the chamber. In that moment, Adam was faced with a choice. He could either continue to deny his actions and remain imprisoned in his own mind or embrace the remorse that threatened to drown him. For the first time in his life, he chose vulnerability. I'm sorry, he whispered, feeling the words tear at his heart. I didn't realize a broken bar I was so cruel. Chapter 7, The Awakening With Those Words The chamber began to glow, the projections fading as the emotional weight lifted. Adam collapsed to the floor, overwhelmed by a mixture of despair and relief. The reflections had shattered his defenses, forcing him to confront the true cost of his actions. As the chamber door opened, Adam stumbled out, forever changed. He knew he had a long road ahead of him to atone for his past, but for the first time, he felt the spark of hope. He was ready to change. Epilogue, a new beginning years passed, and Adam dedicated his life to helping those he once tormented. He became a mentor to troubled youth, sharing his story of regret and redemption. Though he could never undo the past, he learned to embrace empathy and compassion, guiding others toward a path of kindness. And so, Adam's journey continued, 
a testament to the transformative power of self-reflection and the possibility of redemption. The reflection chamber had not only shown him his darkest moments but also illuminated a path toward healing and hope. Chapter 8, The Path to Atonement As Adam settled into his new role as a mentor, he faced the daunting task of confronting his past while building a better future. Each day, he visited local schools and community centers, sharing his story with groups of young people who were struggling with their own issues. He spoke candidly about the darkness that had consumed him and the pain he had caused, hoping to inspire change in others before they fell into the same abyss. The first time he stood before a group of students, he felt the familiar rush of anxiety. He glanced at the faces before he was some eager, others skeptical. I used to be just like you, he began, his voice shaking. I was cruel, selfish, and thoughtless. I hurt people because I thought it was funny, but now, I see how wrong I was. The room fell silent as Adam recounted his journey through the reflection chamber. The students listened intently some visibly moved by his honesty. He emphasized the importance of empathy and understanding, encouraging them to think before they acted. You can change the narrative, he said, his eyes scanning the room. You have the power to choose kindness over cruelty. Chapter 9 Facing the consequences despite his efforts to change, Adam knew that his past actions could not be erased. He often found himself haunted by memories of Emily and others he had wronged. One day, during a particularly emotional session, a girl raised her hand. What if people don't forgive you? She asked, her voice trembling. Adam took a deep breath, knowing this was a question he had pondered countless times. Forgiveness isn't guaranteed, he admitted. Some people may never forgive me, and that's okay. What matters is that I continue to strive to be better and make amends in any way I can. Determined to make a tangible difference, Adam decided to reach out to Emily's family. It was a terrifying prospect, but he knew he had to try. He wrote a heartfelt letter explaining his remorse and the impact her daughter had on his life. He sent it, unsure of what response, if any, he would receive. Chapter 10 A Chance Encounter Weeks later, Adam received a reply. It was a short note from Emily's mother expressing her gratitude for Adam's courage to reach out. She explained that she had seen him speak at a community event and was touched by his sincerity. Although she could never forget the pain of losing Emily, she appreciated Adam's commitment to change. This response sparked something within Adama and who found determination to honor Emily's memory by dedicating his life to helping others. He began organizing workshops focused on anti-bullying initiatives, collaborating with schools to create safe environments for students. He wanted to ensure that no one else would have to suffer the way Emily had. Chapter 11 A Community Transformed As Adam's Workshops Gained Traction he saw a shift in the community. Students began to speak out against bullying, forming support groups and advocating for kindness. Adam felt the sense of purpose he had never experienced before. He witnessed firsthand the impact of his efforts, and it reignited his hope for a brighter future. However, he still struggled with moments of doubt. Was he doing enough? Would his past always overshadow his present? One day, during a particularly challenging workshop, he found himself spiraling. After the session, he stepped outside for some fresh air, feeling overwhelmed. As he leaned against the tree, a familiar face approached him. It was one of the students from the workshop, a girl named Sarah who had been particularly vocal about her struggles with bullying. Mr. Caldwell, she said softly, I just wanted to say thank you. Your story has really helped me. I've started standing up for myself and others because of what you've taught us. Adam's heart swelled with gratitude. I'm so proud of you, Sarah. You're making a difference, he replied, realizing that he was not alone in this journey. Chapter 12 The Power of Forgiveness One afternoon, several months later, Adam received a phone call from Emily's mother. She wanted to meet with him in person, nervous yet hopeful. Adam agreed to the meeting. They chose a quiet cafe till the copyright where they could talk privately. When they met, Adam felt the weight of the moment. He had rehearsed countless times what he would say, but nothing could prepare him for the sight of her. Emily's mother looked weary yet resilient, her eyes reflecting the pain of her loss but also a glimmer of strength. Thank you for meeting me, 
Adam said, his voice barely above a whisper. I've thought about you and Emily every day since I reached out. I'm so sorry for everything. Tears welled in Emily's mother's eyes. I appreciate your words, Adam. It's taken me a long time to reach this point. But I see the good you're trying to do. I want you to know that I forgive you. The weight of her forgiveness washed over him like a bomb. Thank you, he choked out, overwhelmed by emotion. I want to honor Emily's memory by making the world a better place. I promise to keep fighting against cruelty. Chapter 13 A New Legacy With the Support of Emily's Mother and the Community Adam launched a non-profit organization dedicated to anti-bullying initiatives. He gathered a team of volunteers, including former victims and perpetrators, all committed to spreading the message of empathy and understanding. As the organization grew, so did Adam's resolve. He began speaking at national conferences, sharing his story of redemption on larger platforms. His message resonated with audiences inspiring countless individuals to confront their own behaviors and foster a culture of kindness. Years passed, and Adam found himself standing on a stage before a crowd of students, much like the one he had faced long ago. This time, he was filled with confidence and hope. Every single one of you has the power to change the narrative, he proclaimed, his voice strong and clear. You can choose kindness over cruelty. You can be the change this world needs. Epilogue a legacy of kindness as the applause rang out. Adam felt the sense of fulfillment he had never known. He had faced the reflection of his past and emerged stronger, committed to a life of service and compassion. Through his journey of redemption, he had transformed his pain into purpose, forever changing the lives of those around him. The reflection chamber had served as a crucible for change. But it was the choices Adam made afterward that truly defined him. His legacy became one of hope and healing, a testament to the power of forgiveness and the possibility of transformation. In his heart, Adam knew that while he could not change the past, he could shape the future via one act of kindness at a time. Title, The Cursed Appetite of Bobby Fudge Bobby Fudge was a kid like no other he had a bottomless stomach and an insatiable craving for junk food. At just 13 years old, Bobby weighed 1,000 pounds, thanks to a diet of greasy burgers, soda, pizza, chips, and candy. His room was a mountain of snack wrappers, and the air around him carried a distinct, pungent smell. His parents had tried everything to make him eat healthier, but Bobby just wouldn't listen. One stormy night. After devouring an entire family-sized pizza, a strange figure appeared in Bobby's bedroom. She was an old woman with flowing robes made of leafy greens and a staff made of carrots. Her eyes sparkled with ancient wisdom, and a faint, healthy glow surrounded her. Who are you? Bobby asked, still chomping on a candy bar. I am Esmeralda, the guardian of healthy eating, the old woman said. Your gluttony has caught the attention of the universe and I've come to teach you a lesson. Bobby laughed. Good luck with that, lady. I'm not giving up my snacks. Esmeralda smiled mysteriously and waved her staff. Suddenly, Bobby's candy bar turned into a celery stick. His soda transformed into a bottle of water, and the pizza boxes vanished, replaced by a bowl of steamed broccoli. What's going on? Bobby shouted, looking at the green vegetables with horror. You've been cursed. Bobby Fudge, until you learn to control your appetite and embrace a balanced lifestyle, you will only be able to eat healthy food. And if you don't change your ways, you'll never be able to eat junk food again. Bobby's face turned pale. No. No more burgers, no more fries, no more candy, as Moraldo nodded. If you want to break the curse, you must learn to be less gluttonous and take care of yourself. Until then, healthy food is your only option. Oh. And one more thing you'll need to do something about that smell. With the swirl of green mist, Esmeralda disappeared, leaving Bobby alone with his bowl of broccoli. For the first few days, Bobby resisted. He threw tantrums, refused to eat, and tried everything to get his junk food back. But every attempt was in vain and no matter where he looked, only fruits, vegetables, whole grains and lean proteins would appear. Even his beloved snack stash had mysteriously vanished. As the days turned into weeks, Bobby reluctantly started eating the healthy food. At first, he hated every bite, but something strange began to happen. The more he ate the fruits and veggies, the more energy he felt. He found it easier to move, 
and his skin started to clear up. The constant greasy smell that clung to him faded away. One day, while munching on a salad, Bobby realized he didn't mind it as much as he thought he would. He even started going on short walks around the neighborhood, something he hadn't done in years. The exercise, combined with his healthier eating, helped him slowly lose weight. As his body changed, so did his mindset. Bobby stopped thinking about food all the time, and he even started cooking his own meals to healthy ones. After a few months, Bobby had lost a significant amount of weight, and he no longer smelled like old potato chips. He felt better than ever, and the thought of gorging on junk food disgusted him. One evening, Esmeralda appeared before him again. You've done well, Bobby. You've learned to take care of yourself and not be controlled by your gluttony. Bobby nodded. Yeah, I think I get it now. It's not about eating whatever I want, whenever I want. It's about balance. Esmeralda smiled. You've broken the curse, Bobby. From now on. You're free to eat whatever you choose. But remember the lessons you've learned. Bobby's kitchen table filled with a mix of healthy foods and his old favorite snacks. But instead of diving straight into the chips and candy, Bobby reached for an apple. I think I'll save the snacks for special occasions, he said with a grin. As Moraldo nodded approvingly before vanishing into the night. And from that day forward, Bobby Fudge was no longer the gluttonous smelly kid who only ate junk food. He had learned the value of moderation and self-care, and his life was much healthier and happier because of it. Once upon a time in the Grand Kingdom of Valrex, there lived two Anthro Fox princesses, Alara and Selene. Alara, the eldest, was known for her sharp intellect, cunning nature, and beauty, but she harbored dark ambitions. Selene, the younger sister, was gentle, kind-hearted and beloved by the people for her selflessness. Their father, King Regner, had ruled for many years, but the burden of the crown had taken a toll on him. One day, he announced his decision to step down from the throne. He declared that he would give his kingdom to one of his daughters, but he hadn't yet chosen who. Both Lara and Selene were promised a chance to rule, and the kingdom prepared for a grand coronation, where the true heir would be decided. Alara though skilled in the ways of royalty, was driven by her desire for power. She couldn't bear the thought of losing the throne to her younger, more beloved sister. In secret, she devised a plan to rig the coronation in her favor. She bribed royal officials, tampered with the sacred crown, and manipulated the council, all to ensure that she would be crowned queen. On the day of the coronation, Everything seemed to go as Alara had planned. She smiled smugly as the crown was lowered onto her head. But just before the coronation was finalized, one of the royal advisors, a wise old fox who had been watching closely, stepped forward with undeniable evidence of Alara's deceit. The court was shocked, and Alara's betrayal was revealed to all. King Regner, heartbroken by his eldest daughter's actions, had no choice but to punish her. He sent her to the kingdom's dreaded reform school at a place where the most rebellious of souls were sent to be reformed. Alara, however, was not willing to be changed. She plotted escape after escape, each more intricate than the last. But each time, she was thwarted. The reform school had a secret chamber known as the Mind Changer, a powerful room designed to cleanse the heart of evil and purify the soul. When Alara's final escape attempt failed, the reform school's headmistress ordered her to be sent to the mind changer chamber. She fought and struggled, but once inside, the chamber worked its magic. Slowly, Alara's dark ambitions and selfishness melted away, replaced by a newfound sense of clarity and compassion. Her mind was cleansed of her greed, and for the first time, Alara realized the extent of her wrongdoings. After her time in the chamber, Alara emerged changed. No longer driven by a thirst for power, she now felt genuine remorse for her actions. With a pure heart, she returned to the palace and bowed before her father and her sister, offering a heartfelt apology. I see now, Alara said, her voice soft but firm. The crown was never meant for me. Celine, my dear sister, you are the one who truly deserves the throne. You've always been the embodiment of the kindness and wisdom our people need. King Regner, seeing the sincerity in Alara's transformation, forgave her. Selene, ever gracious, hugged her sister tightly and accepted her apology. Though Alara no longer desired the throne, 
She vowed to help her sister rule wisely and justly. Celine was crowned queen in a second, far more joyous coronation, and the kingdom of Valrax flourished under her rule. With the Lara at her side, no longer as a rival but as a trusted advisor, the two sisters united the kingdom in peace and prosperity. And so, Valrax became known not only for its prosperity but for the lesson that even the darkest hearts can find redemption.